additional state funding is being awarded to the local center. The Family Justice Center provides services to domestic violence victims and their children. October, by the way, is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, guys. All right, thank you. Over here in the Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Aaron Mankowski tracking your 7 First Alert most accurate forecast. Gets no better. Look across the country. I can't imagine a better day than today here in Western New York. Unbelievable. Did out you there. see me on Facebook Live say that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I wish I, I missed that, but <laughs> yeah. I, apparently, I apparently should have. We are thinking exactly like Mr. Russo because I said really the nicest weather in the Gotta country. Gotta be. Gotta it, be. It has to be. Mid 70s, sunshine. You get the beautiful lake right there. Ah, oh, just fantastic. Hope you have a chance to enjoy it. Because, you know, things are going to be changing. Uh -oh. uh, that's what happens. So let's take a look at the map. And you can see that area of high pressure across the northeast. For us, a great day today, but there's that frontal system that's going to slice across the Great Lakes and roll through the area late on Wednesday. And that'll be bringing us some wet weather. Here's a look at our time lapse. Look at that abundant sunshine. A lot of folks taking the boat out. Wind starting to kick up. So great evening or great late afternoon into early evening to do some sailing. We're going to have a gorgeous sunset this evening. Clouds will start to increase a bit overnight, right? Uh, but right now we're at 75 degrees with mostly sunny skies. Winds out of the southwest at 10 miles per hour. So it will be mild across the area this evening. Expect wet weather on Wednesday, especially as we get into the afternoon. We start dry, but we will deal with some rainfall later in the day. Cooler for Thursday and Friday with temperatures back in the mid to upper 60s. Right now, we're on the 70s, 75 in Buffalo, 77 for the Falls and Middleport, 72 right now in Jamestown. Lake Erie coming in at 66 degrees. Well, that lake temp still three degrees above normal and two away from the record of 68. So warm for this time of year. Seven Super Doppler scanning the skies, nothing going on locally. You zoom out. And you can see some showers getting close to Chicago, Green Bay, and Minneapolis. And that's the rain that will be with us on Wednesday. So right now we have clear skies. Expect a few clouds to pop up overnight tonight. So we'll call it becoming partly cloudy. And then those showers will start to uh, develop as we get into the uh, early afternoon hours. So you can see your forecast tonight. Skies becoming partly cloudy. We're near 60 degrees. Watch the winds. They'll increase on Wednesday. The clouds will thicken up. Then that rainfall will arrive with high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. You look at the hour by hour forecast. We'll stop it here at noon. We're still dealing with a mix of sun and clouds. Then the rain comes in. You can see scattered showers, maybe an isolated thunder shower through the dinner dinner hour. And then Thursday morning we start with cloud cover, end up with some sunshine. Friday, mostly cloudy skies, maybe a spotty shower or two, especially across the southern tier. Your forecast and for tonight. Becoming partly cloudy, staying mild, overnight lows in the upper 50s. Winds out of the south, 5 to 15 miles per hour. On Wednesday, your high 77 degrees. Clouds will increase. It'll be windy and warm with afternoon showers and thunder showers. Winds out of the south, southwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour with some higher gusts. On Thursday, we're going to see morning clouds go away to sunshine, your high 69. Friday, we're in the upper 60s, mostly cloudy. Can't roll out a few showers, especially over the southern tier. We head into the weekend with temps anywhere from 70 to 75 degrees. Looking at partly sunny skies. The chance for a shower both Saturday and Sunday. Not a washout this weekend, but uh, not completely dry either. So still some uncertainty for the upcoming weekend. Then we hold in the low to mid 70s as we get into next Monday and Tuesday. A couple hurdles, but looking pretty nice. Yeah, you know what? For this time of year, temps in the upper 60s to upper 70s on your 7 First Alert 7 day, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. All right, thank you, Aaron. Yep. Well, guys, this is a pretty unlikely friendship. Still okay. ahead on 7 Eyewitness News at 5, a cop and a skunk help each other out. It is unlikely, Ashley. And all new on 7 Eyewitness News at 5.30, attention parents. If you have a toddler in the house, an important recall from Playtex. I'm going to have the details for you. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News on this Tuesday at 5. Well, the weather machine contest wrapped up and we were happy to announce that Maryvale Intermediate was the one who ended up on top the September winner. Take a look at the announcement. That Maryvale Intermediate has won the weather machine. You could feel the excitement out there as all of those third to fifth graders, 400 of them, are thrilled that they are going to get the weather machine to come out to their school. We're going to pick a date and bring the weather fun to them. If you did not end up on top, your school didn't make it to the top spot, we've got another contest. It begins on Wednesday morning. Get your weather word and get ready to vote. We'll see you there.
Get the latest weather alerts from the 7 First Alert team of meteorologists and the latest headlines from the 7 Eyewitness Newsroom by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter. Check, 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 check. Weather, weather, weather. Check in with the piker. Yep. Testing one of the Provazic 7910. Well, take a look at this. A Maine skunk stuck in a sticky situation, getting a little help from a friendly officer. This little skunk discovered with its head stuck in a McFlurry cup. Happens, right? York police officer David McKinnon risked getting sprayed, though, to help out the situation. Oh, pull, pull, pull. There, I got you. Oh, pull, pull, pull. There we go. See, you're okay. Oh, once free, the skunk appeared ready to spray. Look at that. Then reconsidered and just scampered on <laughs> off. Video of the good deed went viral immediately, as you can imagine, racking up thousands of views. As for the officer, he made a smelly new friend. Oh, that's pretty funny. See what day it was. It's October 3rd. Well, everybody, today is Mean Girls Day. Yeah, no kidding. A day proclaimed by fans of the 2004 comedy film, which has gained cult status. It's even inspired a new Broadway show. So how does one, guys, hmm. mark Mean Girls Day, right? What do you do? You try to quote Regina George throughout the day in conversation? Good. You might not make very many friends today if that's what you decide to do. Maybe you decide to set aside your differences, tell somebody how you really feel. Again, like Regina George and Lindsay Lohan's character. Mean, I just don't know. Mean Girls Day. Keith, of, maybe you do that little... Uh, that little how, kiss. You know, Keith, I, how did you celebrate Mean Girls Day? Well, I must today? have missed this one because I didn't see that movie. <laughs> oh, come on. No. You haven't seen it? <laughs> no. All right, so this is how Keith marks Mean Girls Day. You have a date <laughs> with your television. You're going to watch that movie tonight. Oh, it is we a, want a full it review. We'd like movie. a full <laughs> review. <laughs> All right, tomorrow. I'll give you a review tomorrow. All right. <laughs> All right, coming up here on 7 Eye with this news at 5.30 tonight, of course, we'll have the latest from Las Vegas. Also, it's full steam ahead now for the local premiere of the movie Marshall here in Buffalo, but a change of plans for the red carpet event in Las Vegas.
It's a fun place in the southern tier where they make even big kids feel like little kids. I'm Mike Randall. We'll have that story coming up. Tonight on 7 Eyewitness News at 530, a local college slashing tuition, schools now competing for students. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Then President Trump raising a few eyebrows during his visit to Puerto Rico today. And a choking hazard forces Playtex to issue a massive recall. Good evening once again. We begin tonight with the very latest from Las Vegas as people in that city and around the country try to come to terms with what happened there on Sunday night. Here are the latest numbers as of right now. As of this hour, the death toll stands at 59 and the number of wounded tops 500 now. 45 of those who are wounded are now listed in the hospital in critical condition. People are still lining up in Las Vegas to donate blood. More than $4 million now has been collected online, money that's going to be used to help the injured and their families. Allegiant Airlines is now offering free flights into Las Vegas for victims' family members. And slowly now, the names of those who were killed are being released. All but three have now been identified. Most of the wounded were either hit by the gunman's bullets, hit by metal shrapnel, or injured in the stampede as people ran for cover. I got here about 10, 50, 11 o'clock, and it was just it was a trauma bay full of 
you know, probably at least 70 people and patients stacked and packed everywhere. Every bed was full. We had patients uh, in the hallways. We had patients coming through the door. And it was just, yeah, controlled chaos, trying to process everybody and figure out who was, who was the most seriously injured. There are also reports now that the gunman here, Stephen Paddock, just days ago, transferred $100,000 in cash to a bank account in the Philippines. Authorities say they are investigating that report. As far as we know, as of this moment, there is no word of anyone from Western New York being a victim in that attack. But that could always change as more information comes in from Nevada. Much more on the story coming up on 7 Eyewitness News in about half an hour at 6 o'clock and on ABC. ABC's World News at 6.30. All know at 5.30 tonight, it's something you almost never hear of anymore, a college actually lowering the price of admission. But that's exactly what's happening at Canisius College here in Buffalo. It is slashing tuition by 23%, rolling it back next fall from $35,000 a year to what it was 10 years ago, down to $27,000. Now, the move comes at a time when private schools like Canisius are facing some pretty strong competition from SUNY schools and the new Excelsior Scholarship Program. That program offers free tuition at a state school for families who make up to $100,000 a year. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Justin Moore spent the day today talking with students on the Canisius Main Street campus. It's crush time for Lexi Maida. The Canisius freshman is hard at work on this English paper. But it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Maida can now focus more on her academics, knowing she won't have to figure out how to cover the cost of tuition that her scholarship doesn't cover. Loans are not going to be something I'm looking forward to pay back at the college. Hoping that maybe, if anything, I'll have to take out maybe just a few hundred for books. She will benefit from Kanisha's tuition reduction, which will save her roughly $8,000 a year. The, the state's free tuition program certainly sharpened our our focus on that topic. Canisius President John Hurley says New York's Excelsior Scholarship is the driving force behind this reduction. It allows New York families to attend an in-state public college for free, something that's hurting enrollment numbers at Canisius. And the experience of this past summer kind of dictated that we, we do something now. Now, with the money students would be saving here at Canisius, they can buy a whole bunch of ramen noodles, or perhaps a nice car, or just give that money back to their parents so they can take a nice vacation. Canisius is even slicing the price of housing by $2,000, giving this off-campus student options. I'm like, well, that is a lot of more money I would have to take out, but now if I don't have to take out, all this money for tuition and dorming would be something I consider. On the campus of Canisius College, Justin Moore, 7 Eyewitness News. From the Southern Tier tonight, a suspected rapist is locked up this evening. This is 28-year-old Timothy Perrin. According to the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Department, he is linked to a sex offense that happened in August of 2016. No other details are being released by authorities at this time. Perrin is now being held on $25,000 bail. Take a good look at this person. Do they look familiar? If so, Hamburg police would like to hear from you. Police say they want to question this person regarding money stolen from a local bank account. If you have any information on who this might be, you should call the town of Hamburg police right away. President Trump making his first trip to Puerto Rico today, greeting families there impacted by Hurricane Maria, and also surveying the devastation that storm left behind. The president also taking the time to praise the federal response amid some criticism of his handling of the disaster. Here's ABC's Elizabeth Herr. President Trump in Puerto Rico as consoler in chief. We're going to help you out. Thank you. Have a good time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. This during the president's first trip to the U.S. territory two weeks after Hurricane Maria, as one emergency official put it, destroyed the island. So far, power was stored to just 7% of the island, and some two-thirds of residents still don't have cell service. President Trump, accompanied by the first lady, even handing out supplies himself while praising FEMA and emergency responders. Great job. Great job. And to all of my people. Directly responding to critics slamming the federal response as inadequate and slow. This has been a Category 5, which few people have ever even heard of, a Category 5 hitting land, but 
It hit land, and boy, did it hit land. The White House maintaining federal help has been delivered and continues to stream in with thousands of troops and civilians on the ground, delivering more than 5 million meals and 5 million liters of water. The president, who earlier bashed some members of the Puerto Rican leadership in a barrage of tweets seemingly making peace on this trip, particularly with the San Juan mayor with this handshake, but again raising eyebrows after scolding local officials on their budget crisis. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Now, during this trip, President Trump did not visit the U.S. Virgin Islands, also ravaged by the hurricane, but the governor of that territory traveled to Puerto Rico to meet with the president. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Washington. Still to come here at 5.30 tonight, Hollywood presses the pause button, canceling two major movie premieres after the attack in Las Vegas. Also, do you count all the steps you take each day? Well, you could be missing a crucial step when it comes to your pursuit of physical fitness. Then we're heading down to Pumpkinville tonight with our man Mike Randall to see what's on tap for kids young and old this fall. A young South Buffalo girl is now recovering from her injuries here at Women and Children's Hospital after falling into an uncovered sewer manhole on a sidewalk while walking to school. I'm Ed Riley with the story coming up. Here's what happened on Wall Street in New York today. Another big day for most stocks. The Dow up by 84 points on this Tuesday. The Nasdaq gained 15 and the S&P 500 up by five and a half. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 530.
Attention parents out there, Playtex is recalling more than 3 million children's plates and bowls because of a choking fear. There is a clear plastic layer that goes over the graphics and that can peel away or bubble up posing a choking hazard. These items were sold at Babies R Us, Target, Walmart and a lot of other stores all over the country as well as from Amazon.com from October 2009 through August of this year. Now, if you count the steps you take every day, you're not alone, thanks mainly to the Fitbit craze that's going on out there. But there could be one step that you're missing, and it could get you a lot closer to your fitness goals. With more now, here's 7 Eyewitness News reporter Paula D'Amico. They are the popular high-tech fashion accessories of their time, those colorful plastic activity tracking bracelets and clips. Simply wearing one might be enough motivation to rack up those steps, but now researchers suggest that there's another solution to meeting that arbitrary 10,000-step goal, and you just might want to have a bit more fun doing it. It's called gamification. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania randomly assigned 200 adults into two groups, one which simply said, a step goal and track their steps and another that turned their daily step goal into a game. A simple game that involved receiving and losing points as a family. Points that translated into a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum level. Reaching the highest levels meant a coffee mug as a reward. What they found? This simple game appeared to motivate subjects to reach their daily goals. Not only that, those who gamified were also more likely to reach their daily step goals for the months after the game ended. So if you want to keep walking on the straight and narrow, you might want to start by playing some games. Stay healthy, Western New York, with today's Health Minute. I'm Paula D'Amico, 7 Eyewitness News. Well, Mariah Carey is sending Buffalo fans an early Christmas present this year. We'll have that story coming up, but first. Remembering Tom Petty. Here's a live look from Skywatch 7 tonight. Aaron's most accurate forecast is coming up as the sun goes down in the west over Lake Erie. Don't go away.
You're watching 7 Eyewitness News with Keith Radford and 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Minkowski. out For God knows when Tonight, the music world paying tribute to Tom Petty. The legendary rocker died overnight in California after going into cardiac arrest. Petty was 66 years old. ABC's Maggie Rudy takes a look back at his life and career. For more than 40 years, Tom Petty topped the charts with hit after hit, more than a dozen making top 40 and selling over 80 million albums during his lifetime. She's a rock superstar entertaining until the end, only recently wrapping up a 50-date tour with his band, The Heartbreakers. Born in 1950 in Gainesville, Florida, Petty says his father was both physically and verbally abusive. Music became his refuge. By the age of 17, music was Petty's life. Dropping out of school, a young Petty played in the band Mud Crutch. In 74, Petty moved to Los Angeles and formed a new band that put his name on marquees across the country. Tom Petty and The Heartbreakers. Breakers. By 76, they've released their first album, a mix of hard-edged rock and roll and pop, kicking off a decades-long run at the top of the charts. Wonder what tomorrow will bring. Soon, he began collaborating with other top artists, eventually creating the rock supergroup The Traveling Wilburys with Bob Dylan, George Harrison, Roy Orbison, and Jeff Lynne from ELO. Their album in 88 went triple platinum, winning the Grammy for Best Rock Performance. Petty then went solo, a massive success, with hits like Free Fallen, I Won't Back Down, and Running on a Dream. The fame and success began to take a toll, and Petty developed a heroin addiction. But the rock icon continued to make music, both solo and with the Heartbreakers, all while working on his personal life. He recovered from his addiction and along with the rest of the heartbreakers was inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame tom petty known for his laid-back style and trademark laconic drawl but also someone not afraid to fight record companies to keep record prices low As petty himself saying I won't back down. maggie ruley abc news new york also tonight, the movie premieres for two big films have now been canceled because of the shooting in Las Vegas. Marshall, a film that was partially made right here in Buffalo, was supposed to debut in Vegas last night. That has been canceled now. And tonight's red carpet premiere of Blade Runner 2049, which was set for Vegas also, has been canceled. Big news for music fans. Mariah Carey is coming back to Western New York. She's going to take the stage on November 21st at the Seneca Niagara Casino. You know, tickets for that show go on sale this coming Friday at noon. Equifax now says an additional 2.5 million Americans may have been affected by that massive security breach. So this brings the total number of people who may have been impacted to just over 145 million. That's almost half the population of the entire country. A final report on the investigation is expected in the next few weeks. General Motors plans to introduce two brand new electric vehicles within the next year and a half, and then more than 20 new electric or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles by the year 2023. The automaker has also pledged to convert its entire lineup, all of its cars and trucks, to zero emissions, but it has not specified a date for that to happen yet. The decision by GM is another blow to the future for gasoline and diesel engine cars. Walmart is looking at launching a same-day delivery service, but it will be limited to just New York City, at least for now. The retail giant announcing today it's acquired a parcel of land, uh, a 24 hour a day service that delivers groceries and all kinds of other items from third party retailers. Now Walmart says it plans to use Parcel, that's the name of this new service, to help with its final steps in getting its merchandise to its New York City consumers as quickly as possible. A practice known as last mile delivery, the Parcel deal is the latest move by Walmart to expand its digital footprint and compete with rival Amazon. All right, let's check in with our chief meteorologist now. Another beautiful fall day in western New York. They just keep on coming, it seems. It is gorgeous out here, Keith. Let's take a look at your almanac page four. Today we hit 76 degrees, 12 degrees above normal this afternoon. Your low today was 50. Kind of a cool start to the day. The sun's going to set in about an hour at 6.52. Come up from our morning at 7.15. Look at that Skywatch 7 view. 
Wow, partly to mostly sunny skies, 75 degrees, winds out of the southwest at 10 miles per hour. 77 in Niagara Falls, 72 in Jamestown, 69 right now in Batavia, Lake Erie at 66 degrees. At Lake Temp, 3 degrees above normal and 2 away from the record of uh, 68. 7 Super Doppler, nice and quiet. You zoom out though and you can see some rainfall off to our west. Those showers and thunder showers rolling across the Great Lakes and pushing toward western New York. That rain will be arriving tomorrow afternoon. So you look at our sky cast, you're going to find temps tonight getting into the low 60s. We start off mild on Wednesday, but the winds will kick up. We'll see temps in the mid to upper 70s. You can see scattered showers and thunder showers across the area. Tomorrow at this time, we'll be standing outside with the rain coming down. And then as we head into early Thursday, a few showers linger. Real nice start to the day on Thursday with uh, clearing skies. Nice full moon will greet, greet you if you are up around 630 in the morning. And then we get into Thursday afternoon with sunshine, highs mid to upper 60s. A bit of a breeze on Thursday, and it's the uh, opener for the Sabres. And it looks like the uh, party in the plaza, the weather should be just fine. Now, tomorrow through Thursday at 1 p.m., we are expecting some rainfall. The highest amount there in Springville with about eight-tenths of an inch of rain. Buffalo picking up about a half inch of rainfall late Wednesday into very early Thursday. Tonight becoming partly cloudy, still mild, your low 59. Tomorrow, your high 77. Clouds on the increase, windy and warm with afternoon showers and thunder showers. You look at your next three days, you'll find temps in the upper 60s for Thursday and Friday. Thursday, sunny in the afternoon. Friday, can't rely out a few showers, especially over the southern tier. This weekend, we're in the low to mid 70s. Mix of sun and clouds with a passing shower. Looks nice on Monday. And then we're a little bit cool and unsettled as we get into the middle and end of next week. Let's look at your forecast. Now we got a huge event coming up this Saturday. My buddy Joe is here. What is going on Saturday, sir? This is a variety club uh, event. It's the Toy Comic Book and Collectible Show. It's at 2161 Liberty Drive. It's at the Frontier Fire Hall. We're going to be serving uh, Bocce's Pizza and Paula's Donuts. We've got many characters coming in. It's a low cost family event. Derek, tell them who's coming in. Yeah, who's yeah. coming in, Derek? We got superheroes, we have Star Wars characters, we have Star Trek characters, we have Marvel and DC artists. Wow. There's old toys, new toys, comic books, anything collectible. Come to the show in your costumes. It's only $5 for adults to get in. Kids under 12 are free, free parking. It's a low cost family event. Yeah, that's great. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. Come in your favorite costume and you'll fit right in. It's yeah. it. Come right. dressed or come undressed. We don't care. Just come. I <laughs> love it. Love it. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming out, and we will send it back inside to you, Keith. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Now, let's see what we're working on coming up for 7 Eyewitness News tonight at 6. Ashley's live in the newsroom right now. Keith, tonight, an Amherst couple tells us about their first-hand experience of what happened during the Las Vegas Strip Massacre on Sunday night. It's an emotional interview you don't want to miss. Plus, an outpouring of support from Western New York, and it's heading straight to hurricane victims in Puerto Rico. These stories and much more coming up on 7 Eyewitness News at 6. All right, thanks, Ashley. Also still ahead tonight, is this your favorite season of the year? Well, stick around. We'll head down to Pumpkinville to see what's happening this festive fall season. Doing the six. What else are you doing? The eleven. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know. I can't. T it's different every day for everybody. So.
All right, here's what you do. You head down the 219 past Ellicottville, and you'll find a fun fall family place. Our man Mike Randall tonight explores Pumpkinville to see who's having more fun, the big kids or the little ones. What else would you call a place populated by pumpkins but Pumpkinville? I'm rocking! Not just pumpkins here, lots of kids too. In fact, this place is a kid magnet. It is, and, and, and kids of all ages. Dan Pulowski is the mayor of this autumn wonderland. I'm the Santa Claus of pumpkins. And there are all kinds of things the kids like here. We got our strawberry, we got chocolate. There's ice cream, live animals, stuff to climb on, and things to ride. Dads will probably like this place too when they see this. The incredible donut machine that never slows down and never gets tired turning out those deep fried favorites. What's this? Oh my goodness! Moms can find the perfect backdrop for those pumpkin picks if the kids cooperate. Oh, it's impossible to get them both to look. Mrs. Cole likes bringing her first graders here each year. We've come here in the snow, we've come in the rain, and it's just such a beautiful day to have them out and doing so much fun stuff. And those first right. graders had some strong opinions about what makes a perfect giant pumpkin. One. Yeah. Giant one, big, 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 big giant one. What about the color? Is the color important? What oh, color should it be? Orange. Oh, orange. 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 They're all, <laughs> they're all orange, guys. Pumpkinville, open daily through the end of October for kids and kids at heart. I think the one having the most fun may be the mayor himself. Couldn't have a cooler job, could you? In Great Valley, Mike Randall, 7 Eyewitness News. And that's it tonight for 7 Eyewitness News at 530. Thanks for joining us. Don't go away. 7 Eyewitness News at 6 begins right now. Honestly, I thought we were going to die. Just a terrifying ordeal. An Amherst couple inside the Mandalay Bay Hotel recounting their experience during the Las Vegas massacre. Yeah, um, she's still a little bit traumatized. Uh, it's very scary for a 12-year-old little girl to have to go through something like this. Plus, a Buffalo girl on her way to school falls into an open manhole in South Buffalo, and then she's stuck there for an hour. And price cut. A local private college taking drastic measures to compete with free tuition for SUNY students. Now with 7 First Alert Weather, this is 7 Eyewitness News at 6. Good evening once again. We begin tonight. It's very hard to even imagine what it would be like to experience something like the Las Vegas Strip Massacre. But for one Amherst couple, the nightmare is all too real. They were staying inside the Mandalay Bay Hotel when Stephen Paddock smashed the window from his room on the 32nd floor and began opening fire on the crowd of people attending that festival Sunday night. The Mandalay Bay Hotel sits kitty corner across the street from the Route 91 Music Festival where all of this carnage took place. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Josh Bazan with more now on that couple from Amherst and what they experienced that night. Can't stop thinking about it. It's a night that Ernest and Christine Cattuza continue to replay over and over. I can't understand why, I still can't understand why somebody would do that. The couple was on vacation, staying at the Mandalay Bay Hotel, and were at the casino downstairs when a gunman on the 32nd floor started shooting into a crowd of thousands. Police ordered the Katuzas and others to move, first from the casino to a parking area, then out of the Mandalay Bay altogether. You just never know. You just never know. You never know how vulnerable you really are until something like this takes place. There's you don't know where to run, there's nowhere to hide. This is unbelievable. So Ernest pulled out his phone and started recording. He posted these videos to Facebook throughout the night. I mainly recorded because if this anything happened to me or my wife. Our friends and family knew. They would have known what happened. I think my fear was never seeing a family again because we didn't we, we didn't know. Joseph Katuza was home in Amherst, but he stayed on the phone with his parents for most of the night, trying to keep them calm and sharing tips from his naval training to make it out of these situations. But the biggest fear the whole time in the back of my mind was losing my parents as I was talking to them. The Katuzas are safe at home, and they're thankful for that. But they can't help but think of the dozens of people who aren't as lucky. Yeah, God bless that. 
In Amherst, Josh Bazan, 7 Eyewitness News. And we really are so happy that they're home safe. Police in Las Vegas are still trying to figure out a motive behind Sunday night's attack. They're combing through evidence and found the gunman's home, car, and hotel room. Vigils have been taking place for the victims of the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. Police have now identified all but three of the 59 victims who died. Over 500 people have been injured. And now we're learning more about the incredible rescue efforts that night. Strangers saving lives on Sunday as Stephen Paddock opened fire from his hotel room. More than 22,000 people had gathered across the street at that country music festival. I jumped to my friend. She would have got hit in the back, but I put my arm over and got shot in the arm. He said, like, you're shot. I need to help you. And he took my belt and tied off my leg and, and kept me from bleeding out. I would, I would have died. Police say they found nearly two dozen guns, a computer and a camera possibly set up to record Paddock's horrific actions. 19 more firearms were found at his home and material used to make explosives was found in his car. And now a related story here at home. Police now say a student mentioned the Las Vegas massacre in a suspected threat that he made to harm people at the East Aurora High School. Police have arrested a 16-year-old boy now for making those threats on social media posts. Because of his age, police are not releasing his name. He is charged with aggravated harassment and making a terrorist threat. The teenager has also now been suspended from school. How's Gracie? She has to have surgery. Oh my God, on what, her leg? Uh, yeah, on her ankle, she shattered her ankle. That is a family member getting an update this afternoon on 12-year-old Grace Knox. She is the young girl who fell 12 feet down into an open manhole while walking to Southside Elementary School in South Buffalo this morning. This happened near the corner of Rutland Street and South Legion Drive, not very far away from the Stevenson Street Bridge. Grace broke her ankle, had to undergo surgery at Women and Children's Hospital today. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Ed Riley spoke with her family They've been through a whirlwind of a day today. She would have stayed down there much longer. She wouldn't have made it because she would close the hypothermic up. Okay, well, don't think about that, okay? Just don't think about I'm that. Trying, just I'm trying not to just think about that she's safe, okay? Because that's all I was thinking, okay? The family of 12-year-old Grace Knox is very thankful that the seventh grade student at Southside Elementary School was not killed after falling into this uncovered sidewalk sewer manhole while walking to school. And she was walking, and all of a sudden she said that she was just in the bottom of the sewer. For over an hour, Grace was in the hole standing in two feet of cold water. A passerby finally heard her screams for help. I just want to say to him personally thank you and uh, uh, God bless you for that. Grace was rushed to Women and Children's Hospital. She has to have surgery. Oh my God, on what, her leg? Uh, yeah, on her ankle, she shattered her ankle. <sighs> Her father tells us that Grace normally walks to school with her nine-year-old brother, Jake, but Jake was sick, and when Grace fell, her cell phone ended up above the hole. City officials tell us the sewer authority was not doing work in the area, and Buffalo police are looking at the possibility that pranksters or vandals took off the 150-pound manhole cover sometime overnight. It was found several feet away. Would you be afraid if there was a huge hole in the ground? Yeah. Yeah. People who live in the neighborhood, like Melissa Madsen, are furious because the sidewalk is used extensively by adults and school children. Unknown people out there that are doing these things that are harming our children. Give her kisses and hugs and call me, all right? Okay, love you. Bye-bye. Grace underwent surgery here at Women and Children's Hospital this afternoon, and city officials tell us the investigation continues as to why the manhole cover was not in place. In Buffalo, Ed Riley, 7 Eyewitness News. Now to a bizarre drug arrest in the heart of downtown Buffalo. Police say a guard found a needle and some heroin under a trash can outside the DMV office at the Rath Building yesterday. According, authorities used security video to track down the suspect inside the DMV. And 20 year old Luis Plaza Catala of Buffalo was arrested and charged with criminal possession of a controlled substance. 
Some former Buffalo Jills have something to cheer about tonight. They have won the latest battle in their legal fight to recover at least minimum wage for hours worked between 2008 and 2014. A court has upheld a decision that certified the plaintiff's lawsuit as a class action suit. The former Jills are suing the Buffalo Bills, the National Football League, and Cumulus Broadcasting. They claim they were underpaid and mistreated during their time of employment. And now the dawn of a new era in one of Buffalo's most prominent old neighborhoods. Remember that? That was exactly two years ago today when the old Millard Fillmore Gate Circle Hospital came tumbling down to make way for this, a new $42 million Canterbury Woods retirement community. 58 new apartments and five assisted living units across six floors there. Living here doesn't come cheap, depending on which option you choose. An apartment can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Seven Eyewitness News reporter Brittany Muller spoke today with the very first tenant who spent her first night in her new home last night. For 93-year-old Juliet Klein, the opening of the new Canterbury Woods Gate Circle is a new beginning. Klein has been living in Buffalo for 13 years, but now a new home and a new chapter begins. I really felt that this was for me. I just knew it. I got whatever I thought I wanted. And even more, such as a restaurant, activities like yoga, and a bar and lounge with a view like this one. Canterbury Woods says 20 apartments will be filled by the end of October. There's nothing not to love about this apartment. Two years ago to this exact day, the Millard Fillmore Hospital imploded. And with the rubble, memories of years past. My husband died in that hospital. You know, I think, oh my God. So I feel that I'm here with him to, in a certain way. So for Klein, this isn't just an apartment. It's a new home. I am so happy for my mother. I think this is the best move she could have made at this time of her life. She's right in the heart of the city. I absolutely love Buffalo. Brittany Muller, 7 Eyewitness News. Okay. Next on 7 Eyewitness News at 6, wait until you hear what one local private college is doing to compete with state schools offering free tuition. Also tonight, a show of support. We have more now on how Western New York is stepping up again to help hurricane victims in Puerto Rico. And what's old is new again on the Roycroft campus in East Aurora. We had a gorgeous day today, but I'm tracking some wet weather for your Wednesday. I'll let you know when that rain will, what, what, rain will arrive with my seven first alert forecast right after the break.